Welcome back to Cars and Farms. Today, I'll show you how we set up a bear fence and a train hill. Well, right now we're up in North Florida. We're in the Gallberry Woods is what we call it. It's just a Florida scrub. But let me show you real quick what a gallberry even looks like. Most people don't even know. So all this scrub looking bush here, real high stuff, that's all your gallberry. And if you come look close, you can see right here, this one should be blooming. Probably another week. This is the farthest one along. Maybe another week or two before those are pop open into little flowers. Move on down some. Let's see. So you can see this one's much farther behind. The circles are a lot smaller. So we still got a week, maybe two, before it starts actually blooming. And it'll start blooming slow and then it'll pick up. So let me see what else is blooming around here for you. The plant right here is a blackberry bush. It's a wild blackberry. You can see that flower just opened. And there's a lot of little buds all over it about to bust open so got that blooming there's some palmetto back in here somewhere i've seen a few shoots on the way in they're starting to open up there's about to be a lot up here starting to bust open and the nectar flow should be starting here soon so let's get back to this bee yard and get it ready for some bees so i went ahead and mowed all this yard i mowed this yard and the other two yards i've already built so this is the last yard of the day i mowed them in the rain and the rain just now starting to slow down some but that wasn't much fun as you can tell by my wet box here but these are the supplies you're going to probably need if you're building a bear fence like we build it these right here are fiberglass poles those are what we call our intermediate poles just a good track supply special throw that in the ground these are what we use for the corner post because you need something a little more sturdy your common t-post gonna need your t-post brackets here this is a plastic little clip holds the string off the t-post because metal electricity don't work too good together then we got your string we like using this string it lasts a really good long time it's really durable need your wire for your charger so that'll run to the ground and to the positive and then up to your charger box and old trusty three pound sledge to drive these on the ground might need a bigger sledge if you're somewhere with a little harder ground here it's all kind of sandy, so easy driving. Let me start getting the T-post here driven in the ground. I'll show you how I measure out for the spacing for the plastic clips, and let's get to it. Pretty good. That was hard to do one-handed. Good news, rain finally stopped. Got the post set. You can see one there. Other side of the truck there. And here. Now let me show you how to do these yellow clips. This is the intermediate post. It's got a little foot on it down there. Oh yeah, see that little foot? You step on that. That'll set your height. I'm going to take these yellow clips here. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. You wrap around like this. You need the teeth facing out. Just work it around and clip it in the back there. And you want it set about the same height as these. So then you can go ahead and grab another one. Work your way up to the next one. And I think you get the idea here. Just working in. But I'm going to go ahead and set all these up. That way they're all the same or close to it. Nothing's got to be perfect. The bears can't tell the difference. One important thing I wanted to remind you is that you want these facing out away from the yard because the wire is going to run through here and through there and go that way to that next post down there. So don't want any of your wire ever touching the metal post, only plastic. Let me grab this and the measuring stick here. And let me get the other three done. Well, we got the corner post done. You can see the yellow clips on them. I know what you're thinking. Well, time to do the intermediate post. Well, you're wrong. It's actually time to do the wire. At least the bottom of the wire. That bottom strand because uh, let me show you why. The reason we do wire next is because you want a nice straight string line from this right there all the way to the bottom one down there. And you can try to lay them out by hand and put them in the ground. They're going to be all over the place crooked. So let me show you how to tie this wire and how I do all the tying on this. This is going to be a little tricky one handed but I think I'm going to make it work. So what I'm going to do just put a loop in it. 
like so. I'll use this as a handle. So I'm going to do this first. Then we're going to take it through this bottom. Give you a little excess out there, away from the loop. This goes around, just like this, over and around. And that, you can pull that nice and tight, and it's good to go. And then this end right here will be for our string to run through, tighten this gate up, going that way. So let me start running this wire out. The wire is real easy to roll out, mostly with two hands. But you see, you just walk backwards, just let it roll out. Then you can hold it at the end here and just let it go like that. Depends how many hands you got. You get a nice straight line there. You come down to your bottom. You do the same thing. You want to pull this kind of tight. And you go up. Around the hook. Around the other way. Back up top. And that's actually keeping it tight enough. It's sagging in the middle. But that's where those intermediate posts come in. I got the whole bottom line run all the way around this fence. Pretty big yard here. What I like to do over here, to that loop we made earlier, you run it through. So normally I pull it tight like this. And I'll hold that tight. I'll put a loop on this side. And just tie a knot around it. And I'll try to get this knot all the way down here. I'll have to pull the tail out a little. And pull it tight. Just like that. So you'll have a loop like that, and then when you need to open the gate, you just grab this tail, pull it, and it's, and it's undone. Just like that. Well, now that we got the first string up, we can grab these intermediate posts here. And normally I run on a length this long, or maybe five down that side, maybe three, four across the short side. It's really just your preference. You just don't want this string to touch the ground. If a bear or something gets on it and pushes that string down, then you don't want it touching the ground. It'll ground out and no longer shock them. So up to uh, user discretion, how many poles you use. And the poles are cheap. They're like $2 a piece. So I'd use more than needed for sure. All these spread out and put in place and show you what it looks like. I like to start right in the middle here, halfway between each end. And that's where I set my first post. Sometimes you just grab it with your toe like that, pull it up over the top keep you from bending over and then once you get it in the groove just push down on the post tighten this wire if it's a little slack you can just pull them up move it out a little farther set it in the ground and that'll pull the wire tighter kind of out like at an angle here but depends how tight you want that wire we don't pull it too tight but let me go set these other ones well as you can hear it's raining again but i got the three wires done these wires over here for uh, hooking up to the charger. So this top one, that's a positive. Bottom one's a positive. The end here, that'll go up to the charger. And it jumps and jumps. This middle one's a ground. So we have one end right here. That'll go to a grounding rod that we're going to shove in the ground. And then this other end right here will go up to the charger on the negative side. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. All, we, all we're missing is a ground rod. And the actual charger itself. Let me go ahead and undo these, get in the truck, and head our way back to the house. Well, beautiful rainy day in Florida. It happens, but uh, got a lot done today. I appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribe, do all that. I appreciate all the comments. They've some of them are funny, some of them are crazy, and some people are from Europe. So, hey, check that out. But we'll catch you next time on Cars and Farms. If you guys got any bee or farm related content you want to see, let me know. Leave it in the comments.